1856, the street railway was invented. And actually, Boston was one of the first cities in the United States to have an extensive street railway system. And the first line actually built was from downtown Boston over the West Boston Bridge up to uh, Harvard Square and out Brattle Street and then Mount Auburn to Mount Auburn Cemetery. And so this is an early drawing of one of the first cars. This is along Brattle Street uh, in front of the mansion of, I, I forget the name of the fellow, but this is the guy who owned the railroad. But that's a typical four-horse team hauling a uh, horse a streetcar. And Harvard Square was uh, had a lot of horses around it. In fact, over here, this is the building that eventually became the Harvard Coop. Here we see a car waiting for its horse to be attached, looking toward Harvard University. This was one of the last cars before electrification. This is the last horse car route that ran. It actually ran up until about 1900 on Marlboro Street. And at that time, you could still go from Massachusetts down Marlboro Street. It turned south on Dart Dartmouth and then went up Boylston Street to the Public Garden. One other uh, experiment that didn't uh, work out very well was the steam-powered streetcar. This is the only photograph I have found of it. They put a steam engine in the front here. And... Uh, one of the big problems with that, in addition to it being, they couldn't figure, make it economical, it frightened the horses. You had the cemetery here, and there was a car house, and the horse stables. And you also had Mount Auburn Station, which was on the Watertown Branch Railroad. And at that time, if you were a resident of that part of Belmont, or coming the other way, if you were, say, in the north end of Boston and wanted to visit a relative in Mount Auburn Cemetery, the fastest route was the railroad. There were about uh, 20 trains a day from North Station, and this Mount Auburn Station was the sixth stop, and it was about a 20-minute ride from North Station. Uh, your alternative was taking the horse car, which was maybe an hour and a half ride from downtown Boston. Now, I, actually, they, they started at Bowdoin Square in Boston. And uh, this is another map of uh, Mount Auburn. By this time, it's no longer part of Belmont. And the streetcar line has been built out to Waverly and another line to Watertown. And there was also a line that went into town via Aberdeen Avenue. And these are still, still, these are still the trolley bus routes. Here's a uh, trolley car in front of the Big Bear. And the Big Bear was the market that was the predecessor of Star Market. This is Aberdeen, the end of Aberdeen Avenue coming up to uh, Mount Auburn Street. They must have widened Aberdeen Avenue when they built the streetcars because they built that center strip for the cars, whereas in, in most cases your streetcars would just stop in the middle of the street. And, you know, in fact, I saw a sign on one. They would, your basic law, you know, like your crosswalk law today, it was universal in the United States that you did not pass on the right side of a stopped streetcar. The streetcar tracks were usually in the middle of the street, you know, a four-lane street. So you could have a lane of traffic to the right of the streetcar, but if you saw the streetcar stop and open its doors, you were required to stop. And uh, anyway, the reason I showed the Aberdeen Avenue is, you know, you, you see that strip in the middle of Aberdeen Avenue and you wonder, well, why is that there? Well, that was there for the streetcars. And this is a 1924 view. And I think it's interesting to see how sparse the housing is. 
And now we go to a 1932 view, and it is really built up. Which makes an interesting point. A lot of the uh, suburban development in this area took place in the 20s. And although people attribute the trolley car as a major uh, impetus in population development, the real impetus was the motor car. Henry Ford built the first production line in 1913, and by the early 20s, because you could get a car, it was feasible to have a house that was a quarter or a half mile away from the trolley car line, and you didn't have to walk there. And that's when the uh, housing development in, all of, in Belmont really took off. And this was impressed by me if I talked to Jeffrey Wheeler over in the town hall. And he has a 1981 map of Belmont, which shows every lot. And on it, he's got marked the date that each house was built. And uh, before 1920, there are very few along any streetcar line or anywhere else in Belmont. There are some small clusters around Belmont Center and around Waverly, but not much. First, we have the horse car. And the horse car line came out Brattle Street to Mount Auburn Cemetery, and then it was extended on to Watertown. There was agitation for a horse car line in Belmont. And actually, a group of entrepreneurs applied for a charter. The town government approved the construction of a horse car line from some convenient place on Common Street through Belmont Center via Concord Avenue to the edge of Belmont. The first trolley car line west of uh, Cambridge actually was the line to Waverly. This was a long journey downtown. The line had to go down through Harvard Square. It went all the way down Massachusetts Avenue Fortunately, it was after the Park Street subway was built, which was in 1897. So it went, went down through Cambridge, all the way down Massachusetts Avenue, over the Harvard Bridge, down to Boylston Street, turned left on Boylston Street to the Public Garden, where it went into the subway and on to Park Street. In 1902, anyway, a line was built from the Belmont Town Line out to Pillow Road to Lexington Street. And at that time, there actually was a, an earlier streetcar line that ran between Waltham and uh, Lexington. And it went up uh, Lexington Street in Waltham, continuing on Waltham Street in Lexington. So that connected to this. And then a year later, they actually built an extension into Belmont, into Waverly, and here's where we had the problem of crossing the railroad. The railroad commissioners would not allow the trolley line to cross the railroad, so people coming out from town had to get off the trolley car here, walk across the tracks, and get on another car. And actually, this line was built essentially to get to the Waverly Oaks Park. And then a year later, the uh, Waltham Street Railway opened a line from Waltham coming up uh, Waverly Oaks Road and down Trapello Road and actually into Waverly Square. And that line actually lasted until 1926. And in 1926, they put a motor bus on the line and that was the first motor bus line ever to actually enter the town of Belmont. The last line that was built was the Concord Avenue line. And it, uh, it left Belmont Avenue on Grove Street, came up by the cemetery. And at that time, this whole area was the Bright Estate. And they didn't want to let, as a matter of fact, when you, when you go up Grove Street going north, you see a 
Very nice house slightly to the left as you get to the new rotary. And that was the Bright House. And, and they didn't want to sell. So a new street was constructed on the west edge of their property, and that is Bright Street, specifically for the streetcar line. And then it extended on to Belmont Center, and it ended right in front of where the post office is now. In 1907, they did the grade separation and built that, uh, our famous stone bridge. And the, in 1908, the streetcar was extended up Leonard Street. And it ended about where the firehouse is now. This is a uh, shot of Boylston Street near uh, Old South Church. It would have to be sometime before 1897. And you can see how crowded the streetcars were. Here's another shot during construction. And it was said that you could walk from uh, Park Street down to uh, Boylston Street. And if you walked along the roofs of the streetcars, you would get there faster than if you rode in one of the cars. And that's why they built the subway. The original subway entrance was on the south side of the public garden. Uh, this is Boylston Street on the right. And it was just short of Arlington Street. Here's, a, here's another shot of a bunch of cars coming out of the subway and people getting on at the public garden. The first streetcars actually were converted horse cars. And this isn't one of the ones that came in our area, but I took the photo of it because it, it, it showed, this shows a typical streetcar of those days. You, you may read in some of the historical society stuff about these, the original cars being uh, bucking Broncos. Well, one of the car engineering characteristics of railroad cars is that a four-wheel truck isn't very stable and it will bounce a lot. And uh, that's one of the reasons that in today's cars, you see a pair of four-wheel trucks, one at each end of the car, and they have springing systems such that it evens out the, the ride. 